let's uh, continue the discussion of yesterday where we showed uh, a number of uh, uh, of uh, by now well established uh, uh, theoretical tools uh, to speed up uh, 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 simulation. We, the lecture today will be divided in two parts. In the first part, uh, we'll talk uh, about uh, applications, uh, one application, so one problem, uh, on, uh, with the methods that we have today. The rest of the talk will be methods that we are, so to speak, developing for tomorrow. Huh? So this is the kind of things that we can do nowadays with the methods uh, that we have at hand. And, uh, uh, and uh, that you will learn to use uh, uh, under the expert guidance of uh, Massimiliano and Giovanni uh, in the coming days. Okay. So, uh, so the problem that we want to discuss today is allostery. Uh, and uh, for those of you who don't know what uh, allostery is, uh, is uh, written here, a coupling of conformational changes between uh, two uh, separated sites. So we have, we have a protein, we have uh, an active site, and we have an allosteric site. So if I here insert uh, uh, into the allosteric site some ligand, what happens is the of the other site for a, a third uh, uh, substance typically we consider the case in which the affinity is increased. So something must ha happen, so when I, I insert a ligand in the allosteric site, there is a change of some kind in the structure, so this information is passed on to the other side that changes the property. So you can see that's an important uh, regulatory uh, process uh, in uh, biological uh, uh, processes. And uh, what we're going to talk about is uh, by, uh, which is the binding domain of something uh, which is a bit uh, even more complicated, which goes into super complicated process, which I don't understand, so, <laughs> so I um, don't even know what CBT is. But uh, I think it's in the, in the replica of DNA, of RNA process, but uh, don't, but it's always interesting. Okay. So, so this is uh, so it is an important uh, uh, biological process, and uh, as uh, as it is, uh, the process is a menage a trois, and uh, okay, and there are three. okay. Sorry, I couldn't resist it. <laughs> it's the first time I make this joke. It came to my mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so the, the <laughs> this is the kick, so the blue thing huh? is made of three alpha helices, alpha one, alpha two, alpha three, and two flexible loops, G1 and G2. Now, uh, the allosteric site is up here, and to the allosteric site uh, we bind uh, this uh, small protein, MLL, and uh, the affinity of the kicks of kicks uh, to this other protein PKID is varied whether we have MLL or we don't. Huh? There is an increase of the affinity of PKID to <coughs> to kicks uh, uh, in the presence of MLL. So we want to understand how this is uh, and whether we can simulate it and so on. So <coughs> what people think, so this has been experimentally uh, <coughs> investigated by a group uh, in Austria of Professor Tollinger, with whom uh, we have uh, some collaboration. So what they think is that uh, if we look at the binary complex, LL kicks, uh, this has uh, a strong dynamics, and the dynamics is made of two sorts of uh, uh, the state of the protein. There is a protein which, <coughs> which corresponds to a state which corresponds to the ground state, which uh, where the protein, the complex, the largest majority of its, uh, of its time, 
And then there is an excited state. Huh? In this excited state, and the properties of this state, and in the excited state, uh, it's much easier to bind the M, uh, M, uh, oh, this uh, third fastener there. I don't know the name. So, uh, uh, what, what other information we have? And that is enumerating the experimental information that we can do. <coughs> so we have uh, NMR structures for the binary complex, uh, which uh, in this picture will correspond to the ground state. Uh, so this is, uh, and and uh, we don't have any data information on the excited state of the binary, but uh, we, we, have, uh, we have information on the ternary, uh, when the, the, the substrate uh, is bound here, and, and uh, the, the hypothesis is uh, that uh, uh, this corresponds roughly to the, to, the, to the excited state of the binary. Uh. <coughs> Uh, do we have any direct information about uh, the structure of uh, of the binary? I mean, the ground state we know, but the excited state, uh, can we say something? Huh? First experimentally, and then we see theoretically. Okay. If you use uh, NMR, and you have two conformers, and these two conformers are very well separated, the typical time scale of I mean, NMR, as you know, is a millisecond. Uh, uh, so if uh, the lifetime is large uh, of this thing, so it's larger than millisecond, the lifetime is larger. Then our experimental colleagues will see two different signals. One coming from conformer A and the other coming from conformer B. If, uh, however, we are in a regime in which uh, <coughs> the transition, the conversion between one state and the other is on the order of milliseconds or faster. Uh, the, the, the NMR doesn't have the resolution to see if the individual contribution will see an average. Hmm? And uh, uh, it's, uh, it's very difficult uh, from this average information to reconstruct uh, the, uh, the structure of comfort. Then are people that really are clever, and there's some magic by which, uh, even if uh, we don't know the structure of the excited state, uh, we can they, they can determine whether there is uh, an excited state. There is a technique which I, I'm not in the position to explain it, which is called energy relaxation dispersion. And through this analysis of this particular signal, they can extract the information that there is uh, for the binary conformational tradition between two conformers at which it takes place. So, three. And uh, roughly, they can say 7% of the excited state, 90% of the time is in the ground. And the question is, is the, what is the nature of the excited state, and, uh, and uh, is it somehow related to, to the ternary structure or not? Hmm? So we, I mean, when you put uh, when you put uh, the, the the third partner uh, into 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 the <coughs> into into the binary thing. In, uh, uh, of course, you, you may change something, so there's no guarantee that the structure with the ternary crystallized does correspond to the excited state. And the, in general, it is not true. In this particular case, it is close, but we have another example where that is. So we need some form. Of, the question is whether we can couple this experimental uh, information that we have with the, uh, with the molecular dynamic simulations. Uh, such that we can do a, a, a structural, if you wish, a spectroscopy of the excited state. Huh? A structural spectroscopy of the excited state. So this is our. Uh, 
Of course, if you look at this uh, uh, picture, you see there is a big problem here. Yeah? We are talking about transitions which occur in the, in, the, in the time scale of 3 milliseconds. Don't think perspective. So how are we going to do that? And so if you do ordinary MD, there is no way of doing it. But we have been working for so many years with so many clever people. And so we think that our method can, can do it without... Uh, ah, the other thing that I forgot to mention before going on that, that the other information that one can have change that takes place in going from the excited state, uh, from the ground state to the excited state, that there is one <coughs> here, here, 657, which changes the position. That comes from NMR. So if you have a solution and increase, uh, you keep adding uh, the, uh, the substrate, uh, the signal from the isoleucine changes, changes a lot. Hmm? Changes a lot. So it means there there is some action. And, and, and uh, this uh, uh, isoleucine, so to speak, uh, it's an indicator of, uh, of, the, of the state in which the protein is. So will play an important role in our 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 discussion hmm? and uh, 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 the idea I have two of these indices here in the six five seven and uh, in the in the ground state uh, in in the binary complex is uh, is like this in the in the ternary complex which is uh, presumably uh, related to the excited state. Uh, uh, there is a hydrophobic core which is opens a bit, uh, this can rotate and interact uh, with the third pattern and it is uh, this rotation of the isoleucine that favors uh, the binding of the PKID to, to the core. Okay, so, uh, as I said, uh, we have, uh, can we do spectroscopy of the excited state? Uh, with the molecular dynamics, in spite of this uh, millisecond barrier. And, and the idea, and, and the answer of course is yes, uh, uh, otherwise I wouldn't have talked about it. Uh, and, 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 and so we will do, using what I, uh, I alluded to yesterday, not really explained, so we use uh, well-tempered ensemble plus Parallel tempering, and uh, uh, we use a little trick. So, huh? There is no free lunch. Uh, we are not aware of the clever. If you do this, uh, you find that the problem with parallel tempering is to do straight uh, huh? parallel tempering. When you go to the higher temperature, the helices would unfold, uh, and the whole thing and bring back the helices into the wound up state. It's not possible. So what we did, and the trick that uh, made it possible, is we put a constraint on the helices, on the on the structural entities of the protein. Uh, this constraint don't act at the room temperature because the, so the, the thing the room temperature can do whatever it wants. But when you go to the high temperature, they prevent the, the helices to contract. So. The, our results for the, for the higher temperature will not be physically relevant, but we don't care to look only at room temperature where the constraints don't play any role. Okay, so with this simple trick, then we can get uh, two millisecond uh, time scales without having to invest uh, 60 million dollars to build the, our own computer. Okay, so and, uh, as, I, as I told you, the the flag that tells you uh, uh, whether we are in one state or one of the flags, which tells you whether we are in one state or the other, is this uh, isoleucine, 657, uh, uh, and so we can monitor this, uh, <coughs> the torsional angle of this, uh, uh, of this amino acid whether we are in the ground state or in the excited state. 
And in fact, that, that, that what happens, so <coughs> this is corresponds to the ground state, this is corresponds to the excited state, and I'll tell you a bit about this in a moment. But then uh, we, we put our system in this uh, so-called excited state, it runs metadynamics without nothing, and we can run under the nanosecond on that scale, this situation. Uh, so what about uh, this uh, thing? That's a third excited state, but uh, if we put uh, the system in one of these components, it stays there for a while, I don't remember, uh, like a few nanoseconds, and then it decays uh, to the ground state. So this is a state which is there, it's part of the dynamics, but NMR people cannot see because they don't have the time resolution to look at this state. But it is important that we see this particular state. Okay. And what happens? Huh? So the question is how uh, how this signal is transmitted, huh? how the presence of the uh, MLL uh, transmits the signal and allows for the isoleucine to to move. Hmm? Uh, and it's quite uh, interesting. And so uh, this is the work with this, uh, the, this is work uh, which is not yet finished of Ferruccio Piazzetti and uh, Alessandro uh, also by Alessandro Barducci, who is now in Lausanne. Uh, <coughs> so the two uh, in a nutshell here what happens here and then I'll, I'll the case here, have a the loop is the was the MLL. If when it's lifted, the three helices, the orientation of the helices can change and give more freedom to the isoleucine. So, so the, the hydrophobic core of the protein breeds, and this allows the isoleucine to more flexibility to go out and be exposed to the process. Okay. So that's how are we gonna are we gonna do that? Are we gonna proceed with the talk and move okay. So the kind of movement of this uh, it's a bit complicated to show What happens? I put here, these are the two alpha helix. This is the alpha leucine. This picture reminds me of the, of the spherical holes. You, you know, I mean, it's a very known joke. If you don't know, I'll tell you. So, the joke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so the, the, the horse of the king is very thick. And so he calls uh, to, to, the, to the palace, uh, a mathematician, doctor, and a, 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 a physicist. <laughs> okay? So the, the, uh, the, the doctor, of course, the sick, the needle, so that's of course what the doctor does. Uh, uh, then uh, the mathematician starts measuring the height, the length, and so on and so forth. Then he comes the physicist and starts. Let's assume the horse is spherical. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so this is the spherical protein, the spherical horse. <laughs> so, the two alpha helix, this is the, uh, this is the isoleucine. So when, when this uh, uh, G1 loop is lifted, then there's a change in conformation. So, uh, they, they move a little bit, this moves a little bit, this moves larger. Now, okay. Uh, how we, are we gonna, uh, quantify the story and can we measure anything in our simulation? And, uh, for this, we look, uh, away of, oops, away of, uh, of, <coughs> measures of a coordinate, huh? that measure this breathing, huh, is uh, uh, you take a little bit uh, of uh, uh, C alpha carbon here 
a little bit of the alpha carbon flare and the measure the uh, moment of inertia of these bits of proteins. And uh, this measures uh, whether the thing breathes or not, because you see the thing opens or closes. Huh? Like you have chopsticks and so, so you look at the measure, uh, uh, measure the, the breathing of the protein, like that. And uh, uh, so we use uh, the moment of inertia to sort of uh, uh, well, characterize the thing. And so we here now familiar with all, with all, uh, with our uh, uh, free energy surfaces. So, so we, we make a plot. Uh, of the free energy surface uh, as a function of the position of the loop. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and you see that uh, there are uh, here a high position huh, where the moment of inertia is high. Uh, then uh, this is lift. Uh, in, in the convention, it means this this g loop g loop uh, g two loop uh, is close to m l l. Then somehow it's interesting that the position is, is quantized, <laughs> can be up, in the middle, or down. And what these things correspond to? So, so that's the typical, that's the highest, as it is, goes down. It's like that. Uh, okay, so we can see what happens with experiments. <laughs> With experiments, we have the, the binary and ternary, huh? and going from the binary to the ternary, uh, the the thing, uh, the the most inertia as we define it, the changes, and uh, the also in our simulation, uh, we have done so far only the binary. Uh, when it's uh, when it's uh, in the in the ground state, uh, uh, moment of inertia has a certain value. After it has a slightly larger part. Uh, so it means it really corresponds to that. And uh, these are the, what is found. Here are the flow K and K2, so which are Sorry, I'm getting confused now. Huh? So let's uh, let's go here. So N P K and K uh, are from the experiment uh, and correspond uh, to the binary. So that's the ground state, and this is the uh, uh, only the key. Um, so let's go back. N K K. So this is the ground state, and so the kicks uh, is also there. And and uh, the uh, if we go without uh, the thing, we go in K two. So I'm getting totally K and K two. Okay, so it makes sense. K and K two. I'm, I'm getting totally confused, guys. I mean, in the end, K and K2. So K and K2, the, they correspond to the kicks alone and the kicks with the, with the thing. So uh, the thing without uh, uh, any activation. When, when I put the ML, okay, the, the thing is activated. Huh? Uh, uh, situation, the the, the the loop uh, is in this position, the, the two chopsticks are close together, the thing is not active. When I put the MLL, then the, the, the loop is open up and, and, and the thing becomes active. And we can, uh, we can there's a nice correspondence, so we can take uh, when the, the, the the inertia momentum is less than a certain value, huh? uh, uh, the, the ground state, uh, so when the thing is not so open, huh? so we are here, huh? so we have a barrier, when the thing opens up, then the thing is uh, lower and there is a difference in free energy of about one kilocalorie.
which is also compatible with the uh, with the uh, with the population. Okay. So this now. So 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 just to summarize. Uh, so with these things, we have been able to see. Uh, which takes place in the order of milliseconds. Uh, we have to use a bit of ingenuity, but that's not so serious. Uh, uh, that's uh, that's actually good. And with the, 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 the our analysis, which is still continuing, shows that the LL uh, has the role of lifting the G1 loop a bit and allowing more more flexibility. Uh, to the isoleucine to go, and this, so, it, so this opens up a little bit, and the, and the Nancy opens even now, yeah, and then can go to the other side. Okay, so that, that's one thing. Okay, so this closes uh, the first part. Okay, so the second part, and so this is what, where we stand here. We, we have other examples in the, in the prion, when it's one loop but it opens in the excited state and we are looking and we get the uh, uh, very interesting results of in that case. Uh, okay, so let's go to the final part of my talk, which has to do with uh, uh, addressing the collective variable problem. Okay? So, already in the last uh, Talk, there was no collective variable there, huh? so it, it's uh, in a sense, if you wish, if you, if you, there were also there collective variables, eh? in the sense that you freeze the part of the problem, that implies that uh, uh, you, you know something about the system and uh, you think that uh, what is the rest is where the action is. Okay. Okay, so let's uh, continue to the contestant method dynamics. So the last, the last bit, which has to do, as I said, with the, with the future, is our attempt to do away altogether with the collective variables and find ways that the system automatically uh, finds out what the collective variables are. And, and this will be based on combining our ideas with the methods taken from machine learning community. So that's uh, what we do. And, uh, and so we cannot do yet all these very fancy stuff, so the application would be the small system, but also with metadynamics we started with the Alan effect side, and then we went a long way. So, first uh, thing we want to uh, discuss with you is, uh, suppose that you have uh, a potential energy surface, which has one minima, two minima, three minima, and there are a certain number of points here, which are hardly visible, uh, but there are points here and there, not so here, less there, so distributed. Uh, 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 according according to the distribution which you can see. Okay. What we want to do is to represent this distribution in terms of linear superposition of Gaussian. Hmm. And this is a method which is called, uh, uh, what is called, uh, the Gaussian mixture model. Okay, so, so this is a non-linear optimization problem. So that's how we do. This sphere represents the various portions that are used to fit the distribution, and that's how it, it, the optimization grows. You see, this distribution, this Gaussian, so defined position, shapes and shapes, so that at the end, the representation of the of linear superposition of Gaussians is as is, 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 uh, accurate uh, as, as possible, and of course, I mean, that, that, but that's nothing new, it's something with, for which there are tricks and ways of doing it, uh, and uh, the final result is like that, you see, there are uh, 
Goshen here, uh, Goshen there, and there are also longer portions which tend to represent the points that are scattered. Okay. Now, the idea now is uh, so I have this thing, I have my Goshen, to use uh, in a metadynamic sense uh, local collective variables the distance uh, of uh, of, uh, so from the center of the Gaussian. So in the case that the local, the Gaussian is spherical, this will be our collective coordinate. In the more common case, in which the, the basin, uh, the Gaussian is not uh, spherical, we have to use uh, the uh, covariance matrix. But that's uh, just a trivial thing. So that's uh, as a way of introduction. And we now go do what we discuss what is the reconnaissance metadynamic. So we start here, then the system stops, finds uh, the Gaussian, the Gaussian push the system out of the minima. We have to decide where the minima ends, but uh, we have criteria for doing that. Then the particle is pushed outside and then puts other, other Gaussians, then uh, other Gaussians here. So is this well, then it continues uh, huh? over there, and then uh, uh, then it stops, does a new fitting, uh, and, and adds uh, all these biases. These are all local biases. Huh? There's not a single collective coordinate, but there are millions of local coordinates. So there is one or say a few on, on this minimum, a few on this minimum, there, and so on. Okay. So this is the basic idea of reconnaissance. I think uh, we should stop. It's getting uh, very artistic, uh, but uh, <laughs> not more informative. Okay. Okay. So. To look at uh, one difficult problem in a certain sense. So it's the Leonard Jones cluster of the eight atoms, uh, represented as a polyhedron, but these are atoms. And, and, and the fact is that this is a typical difficult uh, optimization problem because we have uh, one minimum here uh, well, around the dicotahedral structure, which is flat uh, and uh, entropic in nature. And then we have a very narrow triangle, which is uh, enthalpic and very narrow. So if you start from anywhere here, it's very difficult so for um, uh, optimization methods to find out uh, that there is uh, a very narrow and deep minimum. Works uh, in this case. Uh, and uh, with, uh, this, I think we can pushes around the very fast of the point. But I think I would skip that and uh, look for a more interesting application. And this is a, a, a classical problem in uh, 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 in uh, uh, ligand protein interaction. And it's benzamidine and tryptine. Benzamidine is this uh, object here. Around uh, there are sorts of waters, sorts of waters, uh, and uh, some here, here, is, uh, which will appear. This is the position in which, uh, in which the benzamidine, you know, from experiment is going to go. Uh, uh, we hope so. Okay, so and let's go. Now the movie. So this is our trip scene, so we start from totally random position and, and, uh, and the benzamidine is pushed all the time from the local minimum and gets away, goes around and around and uh, eventually it will end up, uh, as you must imagine, into the green, uh, into, into the position. Okay. So that's, uh, uh, that's very nice. And of course, you see, it's much more efficient in exploring space. It keeps uh, being kicked uh, 
in the bath all the time, and so it goes as close to uh, so, so uniformity of the surface of the high probability there, and the uh, state molecular dynamics, uh, it finds the local minimum, and uh, then it stays there and never goes into the ground. Uh, okay. Uh, so, the question starts Okay. Uh, the question is, uh, now, one, one of the nice features of, of, of metadynamics, as you might have noticed, is that uh, you do push the system around, but you push it with the criterion, so at the end, uh, the statistical mechanism is correct. Huh? Here, you are pushing it around, so it's very good for finding, exploring faster position, but we don't know what is the free energy. Huh? And there is no way of doing it because uh, the, this uh, uh, this coordinate that we are using is a bunch of these local here, local there, local there, billions of these uh, collective coordinates. But there is no global thing, so you can say in, in low dimension what is uh, huh? the corresponding. To, to apply, uh, say, standard metadynamics to calculate free energies, we need the global collective coordinates. And so that's, uh, that's the second part. So this, we want to contract that. To do that, <coughs> what we have to take, uh, we have to map uh, all these coordinates uh, that we have uh, uh, scattered around. So, <coughs> so all these uh, log, uh, local things, which are, we live in a high dimensional space, into, oh no, you leave it the other way around. So we have to map this, uh, uh, of the atoms that they live in into a low dimensional space. And this is typically done, that demand, there is huge literature there uh, for doing that, uh, and uh, typically it's done, you take uh, the distance in the big space, you take, uh, you, you try to find the correspondence between uh, such that the distances in the big space are as close as possible at the projection uh, into the low dimensional space. So you take this function and try to find position in the small space such that is uh, as, uh, as, as small as possible. This, this, oh, this is called the stress function. So things that we want to open. Actually, what we really do is to use a bit more complicated things because uh, uh, this doesn't work too well, as you can imagine. Uh, one put the one. Li non-linear function. So, and we'll, we'll discuss how we, how we choose uh, this non-linear function. So we want that uh, this transform, this distances in the high dimension are, are, are equivalent, uh, uh, as close as possible to the transform distances in the low dimension. For do, before doing that, uh, because we don't want to look for a universal dimensional reduction, uh, uh, method, which is, I think, it's impossible. Uh, we want to look at the nature of the of the problem at hand. And so to, to, to get an idea, we need to say it's uh, poly polyvector. Uh, and then we look, uh, we let uh, this thing run. And uh, this will be like, uh, I don't know, 14 dimensional thing. Uh, and in this 14, we look at any cuts in this space, and we find that the data, huh, they are not scattered uniformly, but advanced in blocks. And that's not surprising, because we look at singles, uh, and are not distributed in the project. They are not distributed. So there are uh, blocks like that. And if we look uh, and the data, they have a very, very small structure. Maybe there is a, a more, uh, huh? the distribution of distances in the protein. And we see that there are two areas. I mean, uh, the, here I plot the distribution of points in a, in a, inside the block. Huh? 
So this is here the Gaussian sitting here, huh? and you take a random point from a uh, Gaussian. Uh, what is the distribution of points locally? Huh? Is this thing here? If we take a point scattered by random, huh? the distribution of points in form of random distribution. If we take this our problem, instead we see that the short distances he behaves like a Gaussian, the long distances he behaves random. And for us, what happens inside the blob is not uh, so interesting, what we want to know is to get the structure of the blob, how, how all these blobs are the network of connectivity, and so the interesting uh, uh, for doing this mapping in a useful way is not to focus on short distances or in very long distances, but to, fo to focus on the intermediate region, which express uh, this notion of that the, 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 the joining uh, segment uh, between one blob and the other. And so it requires uh, an appropriate choice uh, of, the, of this nonlinear function. And for this, uh, we use a sigmoidal, sigmoidal function, uh, which uh, really focus uh, the fitting, uh, gives a uh, very little importance to this distance, to the large distance, but focus uh, yeah, into the intermediate. Okay. Before, since uh, things are uh, complicated, uh, already for a small protein like this, uh, to understand uh, how it works, we built uh, an artificially constructed model which expresses, which contains most of the feature or the, the, the structure of the protein, uh, uh, but that makes uh, things easy to, to follow. Okay. So, model, huh? which is a simple analytical data, and this is of course the structure of blobs uh, with the passage weight. The distribution of this is a bit funnier, but uh, it is similar to that. So, things work, so we do our math. What does it do? Every blob becomes uh, a node in this network, and the network, however, is there. Huh? If you go from tree to T, the periodic system, of course, you're bound to break something. Huh? You have to distort it, so it uh, has some connections which are broken, and it will see. Uh, so it might cause some problems. You know, how to handle these things. So that's our distribution. So it's not as possible the connectivity of the of the network states. And if you compare with other methods, uh, you see that in this respect, I mean each method is own pros and cons, but in, if you want to focus on the connectivity, you see the other methods that they are much worse than others. Really, what we say apply to more significant state uh, situations. Uh, take a, a isolated thing. Uh, you see that nicely we can make this map. Nicely we find that the alpha helix state needs to be by from the. Uh, <coughs> Thing and uh, we got the comment uh, from Martin. Uh, uh, since it's a bit uh, the idea how you examine the properties of metals, of metals, of protein. Don't forget uh, this method sketch map. So take a distribution of points and we try to, uh, to express it in a low dimensional state with this method of focus on connectivity. Uh, and uh, we can do that uh, now from this uh, simple uh, three-dimensional problem to more significant data. It is a very good method for, for, for really understanding what the system does. 
Tommy Dewa sudah Liga not the actual uh, no the not the actual it's the problem of the uh, trip scene with the movie uh, with the trip scene that was going around uh, like uh, a moth uh, around the uh, fire uh, uh, and, and uh, we can plot it and there are uh, local minima and this can be uh, found here this is the representation of the true bound state and uh, we can zoom in see what, uh, what uh, uh, the important steps as the system uh, goes inside the bad inside time and see But uh, this reflects where the this point in this dimensional space reflects where where the uh, uh, benzamidine has grown. Summer salt and it goes inside there. And uh, 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 using uh, some constraint and everything, a lot of the, uh, some dynamical calculation have, have been done and MD shows. Uh, indeed, uh, this is the way the system proceeds. But we need a global view, and there's a lot of information in this map. Hmm? Okay. Uh, that's another example of using this map uh, to understand the, uh, the landscape of a person. This is a G1 beta L in water. Uh, uh, this is a small thing with the w, uh, WT plus parallel tempering. You can find uh, the, uh, the you can converge the statistics. You, you get a lot of information, but then you can look, uh, can do the sketch map business and see. Uh, I think this is a folding temperature for the protein will be all the state. Huh? that uh, are important, there is a folded, partially open, and so on and so forth, and you can see a kind of uh, umbrella, uh, that there's a function of, of temperature, uh, type temperature, which is, uh, I'm not so sure, but this is also the melting, uh, this is a visit, uh, a lot of state, and you cool it down, the number of states, uh, this is the like this funny thing in, 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 in this, this representation. Okay. Okay, so that's the first area. Our, our way of, of, of reducing the dimensionality. Troubles are not yet over. Huh? Because, and I have a technical problem to illustrate. So again, we go back to the three-dimensional example, and uh, we follow uh, the evolution of this. As we see here, but there is a lot that this is a position in this space which we let move uh, according to molecular dynamics in this uh, potential, and we follow the the evolution of this point into this sketch map projection. So, in the sketch map projection, this point corresponds to this. Let go. Nothing moves, and it's of course, beautifully, its image in the sketch map moves. Goes here, and then goes there, decides to come along this bond. Uh, now, what does he want to do? Then it goes uh, huh? down there. At, that's fine. Then there will be something. He goes into this broken bond, and of course he jumps on the other side. So, there are discontinuities. There are discontinuities in this mapping. And that discontinuities in this mapping, they come from the fact that this point, okay, the, the projection from the big space to the, to the, to the, to the low space is done by minimizing uh, this stress function. Huh? So if I have a point uh, uh, here, huh? 
uh, and then calculate all the distances so with some, uh, in, uh, we call it the landmass point in the space, so to find uh, what its position in the small space should be, we have to minimize uh, this uh, uh, highly complicated, uh, uh, highly complicated uh, nonlinear function, and, and at a certain point, uh, the, the minimum goes uh, from one valley, jump this, uh, uh, goes into the other. And that's what causes the discontinuity. Okay, so uh, for doing it, so we 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 are, we are getting around all these things by uh, rather what we do rather than assigning one point in the in the image uh, in the image space, uh, we assign a distribution. So uh, we define a distribution, we introduce some fancy arbitrarily uh, temperature, that's only technical things, no real temperature, this is the threat function, and so the, 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 the position is not defined by one single point, by a function, by a distribution, and that's what we call the field metadynamics. And that's how it is now, and this is, this is the movie, now that I have no longer a single point, I have a distribution. When there are no jumps, uh, this is a very defined uh, local minimum. Huh? Very defined local minimum. And so there are no there is no problem. But when it jumps, which will happen distribution on the other side and then the distribution will be strongly fixed again there. So, so in this way, uh, so some computational cost, uh, we are able to uh, patch, uh, patch this problem of such a jump. Not always there are jumps, but it doesn't, that doesn't much neither. Okay. So this is uh, the, the, how the way we do is a bit complicated, but just uh, so we don't have much time. So this is a sketch map, but this is done by uh, Michele Ceriotti with an artistic uh, thing, and uh, shows one for this particular protein, the sketch map, and you see the two states, and uh, uh, that we are in the Caraibic, and there is some treasure hidden somewhere. Okay, so let's keep on that. Preached on plume, so I don't need to keep doing that. So we got to the end. Thank you.